You know, whether it's the back roads of America or the ancient ruins of Rome, humorous Dave Barry is a true man of the world, and he has travel tips that can even help you survive Disney World with your family and laugh about it. We want to welcome the man New York Times calls the funniest man in America. How are you, Dave? Finally. And contrary to what Matt Siegel told you, you are not the last guest on Good Day. It's like a couple more after me. A couple more after you, and then we'll be finished. How are you? Fine, and you? Um, I'm good. Yeah? <laughs> and if you believe that. <laughs> um, what about surviving Disney World? People say, they call, they say, no spring breaks, no spring breaks. They go down, they still have 45 minutes of No, the, the key to Disney World is to go at the right time, which is uh, 1962. <laughs> <laughs> Any other time, is you're likely yeah. to run into basically the population of Malaysia standing in front of you. But there's a lot to do in line at Disney World. What? Faint. That's good. A lot of people, yeah. Mm -hmm. Administer CPR to people who have fainted. Oh, there's that's... lots to do and see in Disney World. Now, you say this firsthand experience, right? Oh, yeah. I, I have a son who's now 10, but used to be younger. I don't want to get too technical. <laughs> and while he was growing up, we spent most of his childhood years in, in various lines at, at Disney World. Why'd you we, do I'd that say, to yourself? He, he, he wanted to say, we come to like the line <laughs> Space Mountain. Yeah. And there'd be this line, so there'd be like a uh, Cro-Magnon man at the front, you know? <laughs> People who got there early. And I'd say, Robert, you know, you're going to be in law school by the time we actually get into this. But he didn't see, you know, they really want to go on Space Mountain. So, and actually, you can get the same basic effect as just by sticking your finger down your throat. Yeah. There's a little a free travel tip for our... I'm just so angry with myself because the day that we found out the show was canceled, if there had been a camera there, someone could have said, so what are you doing when Good Day is over? I could have said, I'm going to Disney World. <laughs> And I didn't do it, and I just, a free trip, I blew it, didn't I? Anyway, what about Massachusetts? What's your theory about surviving Massachusetts tourism? Well, the key, I think, up here is, you know, this is a, an extremely historical state with a lot of very interesting people, um, by which I mean they're just the worst drivers I've ever seen. Except no. in Miami. My, the, the, the similarity, I live in Miami. In Miami, when I first got there, I thought, these people do not know how to drive. Uh, and now I realize that everybody in Miami is driving according to the laws of his or her individual country of origin. <laughs> Boston makes me feel right at home. You know, the people were actually trying to pass you in a car wash here. <laughs> so it's... And the only state in the union where that is allowed. Yeah. Break down lane in the car wash. Um, and I'm sorry about the Red Sox, by the way, not to rub it in. No, not to rub it in. No. But, oh, God. It's isn't a tragedy, it? isn't it? Yeah. That's one of the major industries of Massachusetts. Someone said this morning the only way the Red Sox can win is to play the Patriots. Would you agree with that? I, uh, yeah, I, I, you think, think that I think both teams would lose. <laughs> <might be. laughs> All right, Europe. Europe is not a bargain these days, although no. Fromer says you can do it on very little money. What is but he, he never goes there, plus he has all this money from selling travel books. <laughs> yeah, you know? That's true. That's my big complaint with a lot of these travel books is they basically suggest that it's a good idea to travel, you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't think it is? Huh? No, no, I think mean, like the number one thing you'd learn, I think, from reading my books is probably better to just stay home and stay stick home. your finger down. No. Yeah. No. But uh, Europe is, the problem with Europe, and I don't want to be too critical of anybody else's culture, but a lot of the people over there have not learned to speak English. You know, you hear about the so-called great educational system they have over there, mm -hmm. but these people are so poorly educated that some of them do not, even if you say it really loud to them, <laughs> do you speak English? <laughs> they still have a problem with it, and that's a very, fortunately in my book, which by the way is for sale. Yes, I know. <laughs> There is a, a section there which explains how to speak any foreign language in less than 30 minutes. Yeah, that's interesting. Without even knowing what you're saying. Yeah, how do you do that? Well, you have to read my book, which, by the way... <laughs> <laughs> well, throw you out of No, no, there are many really the useful... Uh, the problem with, uh, you know, like if, if you remember your high school French, um, they, they tended to be, they teach you these dialogues you learn to, uh, where they're, everybody's obsessed with furniture. And everybody's saying, huh, this is the bureau of my uncle. <laughs> I'll be darned, the bureau of your uncle is right next to the <laughs> chest of my aunt, you know? And you don't need that when no, you're you in France. In France, you need to be able to say, if you don't give me some food right now, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> you know? And is this all the food we get here in France? Is this the defensive mechanism to deal with the French who really don't like the Americans? Nuclear weapons is probably the key. Get out of here. Now that we, we don't need them for Russia anymore, let's use them against... France. What is it about? What, what, why don't the French like us? I don't know, but I don't like them either, so it's fine so with me. So it's all right yeah. with you. Um, why are people, do you think, still afraid to fly? A lot of people get very worried about it. Probably because you're up seven miles in the air in a, in a thing larger than a suburban ranch home, piloted by people you don't even know in defiance of all known laws of physics. Now, I don't know about you, <laughs> but... When I get on a plane, I'm thinking to myself, what in earth is holding this thing up? It's heavy. It's like bigger than a piano. You ever see a piano in the air? No. And you, you go to science class, and they say, well, it's these arrows. Remember the pressure? You know, they show these little arrows. 
I've been on many planes, and I have never seen any arrows going over the, you know. Maybe yeah. after the third Bloody Mary, you can start to see a couple of arrows. Do you but think in my book, which, it? by the way, is for sale, there's a diagram that explains in, in, in elaborate technical mm. detail exactly how a plane, how a plane does, does stay fly. up. Yeah. And also there's some fun pranks for kids to play with airport security personnel who oh. are... <laughs> Are, We're all in that are, kind are, of mood. What are, are they? They are a fun-loving uh, bunch of ki uh, people, the air airport security personnel. They get bored and they want to have fun. And yeah. We have a, a game called Uncle Ted and the Bomb. That is, uh, it's, it's, it's right there in the book. <clears throat> in the book, in the book. The, the book. What about traveling with teenagers? You know, most of the time they don't want to go with you. They... Uh, yeah. Well, it, it, you have to, it, when, you're, when you're dealing with teenagers, you have to accept the fact that because of various sensitive problems and complex emotional needs they think you are the biggest dork in the universe yeah. right? that's what you have to deal with and so what I recommend is you keep a minimum distance between yourself and a teenager to make everybody happy and comfortable it's about the same distance as between Wichita Kansas and Denver Colorado <laughs> you can travel if you keep it that distance right. apart otherwise you can't and they'll be handle. very happy with you otherwise you will be so mortifyingly embarrassing to them that they'll just you know. any tricks on, on keeping the kids happy as you drive across country or yeah, um, what I, I like to do is you, you, you come up with some, some little travel games with them and, uh, and they ignore them completely and spit on each other in the back seat. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of time for them to do that if you're driving, usually because dad is driving the car and uh, dad will not stop. You know, dad, if, if, dad's idea of like a typical day would be from 6 to 6.15 a.m. Mexico, right? <laughs> and, course, and, and, and Dad's idea of seeing things is basically driving past them at 83 miles an hour. It's like, you don't want to see the Grand Canyon. That's, you can see it from here. You know, that, that's Dad. And so that every night they have to stop for gas. Dad is hoping for a car that has a 63,000-gallon fuel tank so that you can go for two full weeks. Without her. But every night the, the family will get out of the car and run, sprint into the bushes, you know, bent over in the shape of the car seat, you know, and Dad will have to chase them down so he can continue having fun on the vacation. You guys, uh. How do those covered wagons get across the country? And you know, you look at the... They had to go across the prairies with the Indians and everything. It's because Dad was driving the covered wagon. <laughs> yeah, a lot right. of those covered wagons drove right into the Pacific Ocean. And yeah. Dad would have gone to Japan, oh. if not for the shark damage. <laughs> At least you don't have to worry about losing your luggage, though, when you're driving. But you do have to worry about that when you're flying. In fact, yeah, it's been a problem ever since the Wright brothers' original flight. Never, they never did find their luggage. They did you know? <laughs> um, Just goes with the territory, huh? No, but it's kind of fun at the end of a flight to get to, go down to the baggage carousel and watch luggage come from someone else's flight. You know? <laughs> they're they're in, in Rome, the people whose luggage you're seeing, <laughs> yeah. or, or even in another country all day. And you don't, your, your luggage is coming out of a carousel like in Jupiter somewhere. <laughs> no one knows. Right? Yeah, that's the worst feeling in the world. How about nature lovers? Those people who say, I love a trailer, I'm going camping. Is it really worth it? Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, the key <clears throat> with, uh, you know, you, you want to get out and enjoy basically nature, which is most people who've been out there know consists largely of dirt, <laughs> dirt and insects. And uh, the key is to find a good campsite, and it, it should be a, a kind of a flat natural terrain, and it should have a water source, and above all, it should have this metal thing sticking out of the ground where you can plug in the Winnebago air conditioning. Um, it's you very know, important. That, yeah. And also there should be, I, I advise against staying on in tents, things like that, because of the bear problem. Bears are attracted to tents, and in fact, bears give their, their little bear cubs little miniature chocolate campers wrapped up in little little tents just to sort of, yeah. So it's... So no, you sem no, you, no Yosemite. No, I, I basically avoid the out of... My idea of really roughing it would be turning the electric blanket down to medium. Yeah, I yeah. agree with you. And having somebody bring the dinner to bed to yeah. me. Yes, yeah. I like that. Um, how about tour groups? Is it really worth it? I mean, you're dealing... Sometimes you pick up a tacky tourist who drives you crazy every once in a while. Well, tour groups are great, especially if you're in a foreign country. They give you a chance to meet people sometimes from completely different states from you. You can all ride around in, in your tour group and see every single cathedral in Europe, <laughs> which is... That doesn't turn you on, huh? No, it's like, in fact, sometimes they take you to the same cathedral over and over and over again. I, my idea is you, you put a little chalk mark on the wall so they can't you know, take you back to that same one. <laughs> Yeah, and claim it, it was a different one. You want to see new, new cathedrals, new cathedrals new over cathedrals. and over again. Yeah. So what's the bottom line here in this book? I mean, the only travel guide you'll ever need. What are we, what, what are we buying? Here? What I'm really saying is, we're buying here a book that is, uh, it's got a lot of features you look for in a book. It's got your sequentially numbered pages. It's got <laughs> fairly big type, a lot of white space. Yes. And my my suggestion, anybody who's interested in travel, is buy this book and then take it home and dispose of it properly. Yeah. I do notice I spilled coffee all over mine, Dave. You don't mind. Thank you. I'm, re I'm really flattered that you did that. <laughs> yeah, I did that. But, but I, it's I all right. I bet you don't do that to like Robert Fulgham's books. <laughs> this is it, and it's fun. And it's for sale. It's for sale.